All right, here we're just going to configure basic passwords, the enable password, VTY line, and console line passwords, and then we'll look at configuring local AAA. So first, let's configure our enable password. We've got to go from user mode to privilege mode in order to get in global configuration mode to do that, so we'll type enable. Now we're in privilege exec mode to configure passwords. We need to be in global configuration mode, so we'll config T or configure terminal, it's short for configure terminal. First thing we'll do is our enable password. Our enable password is going to be admin pass. We have two options here. We can either use the enable password command, which will en just encrypt the password, or we can use enable secret, which will do an MD5 hashing of the password. It's a little more secure. So we're going to do enable secret, admin pass. Oh, and let's check to see that it worked by exiting all the way back out and hit enter. Now we're in user mode, and now we want to go into privilege exec mode. By we'll do that by putting in the command enable. And now notice it asks for a password, so that's exactly what we wanted it to do, admin pass. Now let's go ahead and configure the console and then the VTY line passwords. Go into global config and then go into the console line, line con zero. And the password, password for that will be con pass. And then press enter. And then login, that tells the device to go ahead and prompt for a password. So we did line con zero, password, and then gave it our password. In this example, it's con pass. Of course, you wouldn't want to do something so basic in a production environment, but it works good for an example. Now we're going to go right into the VTY lines and configure a password there. Line VTY 0 to 4. We're going to use it on line 0 to 4. Password, again, it's going to be pretty simplistic, VTY pass. And then we'll type login to tell it to prompt for a password. Uh, and then let's go ahead and test it. So first we're going to test our console password. And then we're going to pull up our, we'll move, we'll move over and pull up a command prompt in Windows. And then go ahead and tell that into the device. And then that should activate our VTY line password. So we exit back, and now we hit enter, and you notice before we even get into user mode, it asks for a password. That's our console password, so it should be con, pass, and then enter. So now we're in, and again, if we do enable, then that would be our admin pass. That's our enable password, so we're in. Okay. Now let's go ahead, and we're going to test our VTY lines and do that by remotely coming in through Telnet. So now connected to our router, we have a computer that has Windows XP installed on it. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to tell that to the router. The router's IP address is 192.168.1.1. And so we're going to just tell that 192.168. If you're using a newer machine, uh, like Vista or Windows 7, you'll likely have to activate the Telnet client and the services, but you can go ahead and do that. Or you could use a Telnet uh, SSH client such as PuTTY. Putty will do that. Putty will also uh, let us, is a terminal emulator, so also let us uh, connect directly to the console. But we're just going to tell that right from this computer that's connected on our network. Hit enter. Now notice it asks for a password. This should be our VTY pass. And we're in. And so we can go ahead and configure from here now. So let's go back into our Putty window. We're going to go ahead and configure AAA locally. The difference is that adds another layer of complexity. You know, still, yes, of course, still someone determined to get into devices can, but now we're adding one more layer of complexity because we're adding the need to also, to not only have our password to get in, but to also have our username to be able to get in. Okay, so go into global config mode. First thing we're doing is going to create a username and password because I said we're using AAA locally here. That means that we're using the local database, so all the usernames and passwords that we might want to use for AAA here are going to be configured directly on the router instead of on a server. So we're going to make a username. We'll just we'll just call them user one, or we'll call them test user. That's what we'll call them. Username test user password for test user will be test pass. Okay, so now we've got a username and password. Now we want to go ahead and we've got to enable AAA first, but I just want to make a point that before you do that, you'll know whether or not AAA is configured because if you do a AAA and then a question mark, 
you only get one option. So we do AAA new model. That enables AAA. Now what you'll notice, if you do a AAA in question mark, you get all kinds of options. And here we're just looking at authentication. So we're going to do AAA authentication. And we're authenticating login. And we can choose here to create our own name for this login or just use a default group. So we hit the question mark and we see what our options are. We can do the uh, default authentication list or we can create our own and type any. That's what, that's what it means by word. We can type any name in there we want. So generally, if I were to do maybe say something for the VTY lines, I might do login uh, and then do VTY underscore lines. So now I know that that AAA group there is what belongs to the VTY lines. But here we're just going to use default and then look at our options again. We're looking at using the local database. We're going to use the keyword local. We could do local case, which just would mean that it was case sensitive. It's still going to use the local database, but say I had capitalized the word test. Then when my user logged in, they would also have to capitalize test. But just for the purpose of example, we're just going to use local and press enter. Now go ahead and let's log out again. Let's, let's exit back. Now notice that it's going to ask for my username. Test user and test pass. So those are the two things linked in there. Now to get into enable mode, I've still got to use my enable password, which was admin pass. Okay, so now we've configured AAA to use the local database and request a username and password. And I could have all kinds of usernames and passwords in there. I mean, I just chose the one. Let's also take this one step further and let's take that default list that we created and apply it to our VTY line so that when someone telnets into our device, they'll be prompted for a username and a password. And I just want to take a moment to say, you know, generally um, in the real world, if we were going to remotely administer, we would want to use SSH instead of telnet because SSH doesn't send uh, the packets in clear text, whereas Telnet does. But for our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and Telnet. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to apply that AAA authentication default list to our VTY lines. Whoops. Now i got to wait a minute. I should have done the uh, no domain lookup command so it wouldn't look up. Basically, I typed it wrong, so it tried to look it up. That's, that was a mistake on my part. Now let's go into the VTY lines. First, we'll go into global config. Then we'll go line VTY 04 again. This time, instead of just login, we're going to do login authentication default. Default's the name of our list. And hit enter. And then we're just going to exit back because I like to. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to test that by, again, bringing our command prompt in or going over to our other machine and trying to remotely access this router. Okay, so now we move over to our other machine and we're going to tell that to the router again. 168.1.1. And assuming we configured everything correctly, which we did, it now is going to ask for a username and password. So now instead of it being VTY pass, it's whatever username I log in as. And since I've only configured one, I will log in as that user. So test user and then test pass. Okay, so now we have successfully configured enable passwords, basic VTY and console passwords. Then we configured instead for AAA to you and we configured it instead to use AAA for our login. So now it asks for a username and password. It uses the local database or what I've configured on the router for usernames and passwords. That's what it uses to authenticate against. And then we applied that to our VTY line. So if someone telnets into the device, it will ask for a username and password. So that's it.